Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Bushnell Prairie City High School Spartan Tip-Off Classic, night number two. It's time for game number one. It is the Macomb High Bombers. As Arnold Brother Heating and Cooling brings Bomber Sports to TSSR Game Time Live, presented by MDH. They are playing the West Hancock Titans tonight. The Bombers are the defending champions of this tournament from last year in their first appearance here with 4.20 to go before game time. A couple new additions. We've got Dalton Strode running the camera for us tonight. And we have a wireless microphone over with Jake Croxton on the scoring table tonight. And he's going to bring the starting lineups and the intro to tonight's festivities. And then he's also going to try to do a halftime interview with the leading coach on the way in and the trailing coach on the way out. So... We want to thank you for joining us tonight. It is night number two, as I said. Illini Bluffs got a big win over the Illini West Chargers last night. They led by 20 on several different occasions, including at halftime. Illini West came back, though, cut it to 11 at the end of the third quarter, but then the Bluffs Tigers blew it open in the fourth quarter and got a 68 to. 46 win, if my scorebook is correct. West Prairie and BPC, that game was not close throughout. It was 58-18 the final. West Prairie scored just two points in the fourth quarter. They scored one point in the first quarter. They did score seven in the second, and again, seven in the third quarter before just two. So BPC, on the other hand, scored in double figures in every quarter, but they had 11 players score. They only had one player in double figures, and that was Dalton Huffman. In fact, it was 15 to nothing at one point, and at that point, seven players had scored for BPC. So it was that kind of a night for the Spartans. So we have Illini Bluffs and BPC at 1-0, West Prairie and uh, Illini West at 0-1. West Prairie and Illini West play each other tonight. One of those teams will end the evening 0-2. The other will be 1-1 one one on the season. BPC and Illini Bluffs are off tonight. Illini West and West Prairie will be off tomorrow night. These two teams that we're seeing tonight and BPC and Illini Bluffs will both be here tomorrow night along with, of course, West Hancock and Macomb. Then everybody plays on Friday, and then everybody plays two games on Saturday. All of those games will be seen here on TSSR Game Time Live, presented by MDH. This game's being brought to you by Tom Conklin State Farm, face-to-face, -face, over the phone, by email or text. You choose how you do business with Tom Conklin State Farm Macomb. You can reach them at 309-837-1200 or visit them online at www.macombsf.com. Better yet, stop in and get your quote today at 1221 West Jackson Street in Macomb. As we said, Jake Croxton is going to do the starting lineups. We are going to have the national anthem as well, so we'll let him bring that to you as well. And we'll be back with the call of the game in just a couple minutes. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Bushnell Prairie City High School and the 2022 Spartan Tip-Off Classic in game number three between the Macomb Bombers and the West Hancock Titans. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we'd like to ask that you please rise as we honor America with the playing of our national anthem.
And now let's meet the game three starting lineups. At one yard for the McComb Bombers, a 5'11 senior, number one, Connor Watson. At yard for West Hancock, a 5'10 senior, number 10, Brian Gerhard. At guard for the Bombers, a 5'11 senior, number 12, Hunter Wilson. At guard for the Titans, a 6'1 junior, number 20, Gage Scott. At one forward for the Bombers, a 6'2 senior, number 13, Langdon Allen. And at forward for the Titans, a 6'1 sophomore, number 34, Louis Siegfried. At forward for the Bombers, a six-foot senior, wearing number 20, Nolan Kerr. And at forward for West Hancock, a 6'3 senior, number 30, Alec Hines. In the middle for the Bombers, a 6'6 junior, number zero, Ian Case. And at center for West Hancock, a 6'2 senior, number 42, Luke Jacko. Jeremy Anderson heads up the Bomber bench, assisted by Brian Langworthy and Zach Keen. Jeff Dahl heads up the Titan bench, assisted by Jamie Cousins and Paxton Harmon. Your game three officials are Brad Gooding, Kennedy Gooding, and Michael Parsons. And that's the starting lineup for tonight's contest between the Macomb High Bombers and the West Hancock Titans. We are ready to go here from... Bushnell Prairie City High School as the boys' basketball season for these two teams ready to tip off. And we are underway. The Titans get the, the opening tip. With the basketball, number 34, that is Louis Siegfried. Now Luke Jacko has it. He gives it off. There is Himes with it. Himes, hello to Jacko from Himes. And the first two points of the night go to West Hancock. Up top it goes to Kerr. Cross court it goes to Wilson. Now up top to Connor Watson on the drive. Picks up his dribble. Gives it back to Kerr. Nolan Kerr. Now to BT. Langdon Allen with it. He has it tipped away. Connor Watson comes up with it. He's going to drive, pull up to the rack, and he's going to get called for the charge. Connor Watson picks up his first foul. Team's first of the first half. And it is two to nothing. Seven minutes to go here in the first quarter. The Arnold Brothers scoreboard at the bottom of the screen. I want to thank Dalton Strode having the camera duties tonight. Far side on the dribble, number 20, Gage Scott. He gives it to Himes. Himes now tries to drive, falls to the floor, gets it out to Gerhardt. That's Brian Gerhardt on the dribble, setting up the offense for the Titans. Jacko out to set the pick. Pick and roll, not there. Gerhardt still on the drive, tries to come down, has it knocked away, gets it out to Scott. Gage Scott now is going to drive spins, dumps it out corner. Three on the way is good for Louis Siegfried. And it's a 5-0 lead early here in this one for the Titans. Good to see Tyler Cummings and Chase Mudd watching tonight. Thank you for joining us. Old BT's got the basketball right now as we speak. Up top it goes to Kerr. Kerr on the drive. Now he's got an open lane to the basket. Misses the layup. Rebound goes to Siegfried. Back the other way. A bounce pass down to Jacko. He gets a hand on it to keep it from going out of bounds. Comes up with it and it's going to be fouled. Two shots coming for Luke Jacko. Fouls on number 13, Langdon Allen. His first, team second. Luke Jacko. The son of Jason Jacko misses the first. 5.49 to go here in the first quarter. 5 nothing lead for the Titans. Second one is no good. Rebound to Siegfried down low. He gets it out to Gebhart for three. Gerhart. And it's 8 to nothing. Titans. Early, 
Gerhardt picks up Connor Watson now, makes him work down the floor. He gives it off to Langdon Allen. Down low to Connor Watson and a nice look. Good ball movement and good movement without the basketball for Connor Watson. And he gets the first two of the season for the Bombers. And it's 8-2, to 5.20 remaining. Himes on the dribble. He's going to go to the rack. Now he's going to come out to Gage Scott. Scott looked to Siegfried, lost it, gathered it back up. Going to have to find somebody to give it to. Gives it to Jacko. Jacko has a hand on it from Kerr. Now it's going to be Himes driving. Himes spins. Going to come back out to Siegfried. And they'll reset the offense. Gerhardt now on the dribble. 4.53 remaining. Siegfried going to drive, dump it out to Scott. Scott looked, bobbled it. He was going to take the three, I think. He throws that up. A little contact or a lot of contact. No foul call. And we're going to go back the other way. Bombers with the basketball. Shot was no good. Jacko with the rebound, and Himes brings it up. Himes shots off no good. Ian Case with the rebound for the Bombers. Out top to Case it comes. Down low, and his pass intended for Kerr is taken away by Jacko as we approach the halfway point here of quarter number one. 4.03 remaining. Gage Scott with it. Going to back in Kerr. Now he's going to scoop it out to Siegfried. Siegfried on the dribble up top, backs it out. Ten-foot line to Himes. He's picked up by Kerr. He goes to the rack, and his shot's good. Alec Himes gets his first two, and it's 10-2. Watson and Gearhart going at it down the floor. Watson gets around, goes to the rack, throws it up. It's off no good. Siegfried with the rebound, and the Titans push it back the other way. Left side to Himes. Himes pull up three, left wing, off no good. Gage Scott's going to pick up the foul as he went through the would-be bomber rebounder. First foul for the Titans. Braden Holdhouse checking in for the Bombers, as is number 40, Jake Hobson. In for the Titans, number 14, Gavin Grothaus. Hobson with it. Comes up top. Holdhouse with it. Oh, Stufflebeam, excuse me. Steven Stufflebeam had the wrong number there. Stufflebeam's runner is in and out, no good. Hobson with the rebound and the put back. It's off, no good. A foul's going to be called. It's either going to be Himes or Scott. Let Jake call it. Himes picks up the foul. Team second. Hobson at the free throw line shooting two. First one is good. Second one is good as well. 10 to 4, 253 remaining. In the first quarter, Gearhart with it. Scott now, 243. Gearhart, 10 foot line, far side. Left side, it goes to Himes. Himes looks to spin, dumps it out to Gearhart. Didn't look to spin, he did spin, but he looked to get to the hoop, couldn't do it. Gearhart now out to Himes. Himes is going to drive to the hoop, going to get called for the travel. 2.22 remaining. The ball goes back to the Bombers. A two-possession game here in the first quarter. Watson's going to walk it up for the Bombers. Hobson with it. Left side it comes. Let's see if that, that was Kerr. On the take and the bucket. The referee was standing right in my way. Couldn't see the number, but it's a four-point game now. As the Bombers on a 6-2 run. 155 remaining. 
Gerhart with it. It was 8 nothing. Titans, Himes, left-handed hook, shot, no good. Goes back the other way. Watson looks to drive, pulls up, and up. I thought he was going to take that three for a second, didn't do it. Hobson gives it back to him. Watson still on the dribble. Keeps his dribble. A nice little behind-the-back pass to Stufflebeam. Stufflebeam now is going to get it out to Langdon Allen. Skips it across to Kerr with 1.18 remaining, and the Bombers will reset the offense. BT with it. Gives it to Hobson. Hobson goes, loses it and is going to touch it out of bounds. Checking back in for the Titans is Luke Jacko. Also checking in for the first time is Nolan Hunt. Nolan Hurt. Can't read my own writing. He checks in for the first time. 105 remaining. That's Grothaus. Scott drives, pulls up, puts the shot up, and they're going to call him for a travel. He drugged the pivot foot. Never picked it up, but he drug it quite a little bit. Finally got the call. 53.1 seconds remaining here in quarter number one. Stuffelbeam will walk it up the floor now for the Bombers as they set the offense up, trailing by four. And Stuffelbeam loses it, and he lost it off his own foot. Good defense there by Gavin Grothaus. And it's 40.5 seconds left, and the Titans with a chance to build the lead. They've been offensively quiet here the last half of this quarter. Grothaus with it. Goes left side to Siegfried. Siegfried on the dribble, back to Grothaus. He goes left now. Scott looks at the three, doesn't take it. Those are some nice pink shoes he's wearing. And he gets called for the travel. Yes, he did. He shuffled his feet as he's picking up the ball. Then he hopped. He was okay till he landed. Checking in for the Titans, number 10, Brian Gerhardt. He replaces Gage Scott, who sits down for the first time. 22.1 seconds remaining. Hobson with it. Right side, it goes to Stufflebeam. Steven Stufflebeam to Watson. Watson will take the long three from about the 10-foot line. It's off no good. Rebound to Siegfried. He's going to... Oh, Watson's going to steal it away. He's got a shot. Puts up the long three. It's off no good. At the end of one quarter of play, the Bombers trail the West Hancock Titans 10 to 6. We'll be back on TSSR Game Time Live presented by MDH in just about 30 seconds. At Western Illinois University, Leathernecks don't just blend in. Our purple stands out. Our students are innovative, creative, and resilient. At WIU, there is limitless potential, with campuses in Macomb, the Quad Cities, and online. Visit wiu.edu slash potential to become a Leatherneck and get an education that stands out. Welcome back to Keith Yex. Don't laugh at me. You know Chubby's is good. It's, it's, I'm fat. It's, 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 I'm fat. I know good food. <laughs> Keith Yex is here getting ready to do a, the Illini West broadcast for WCAZ, I would imagine. And I said, do you, uh, do you like Chubby's restaurant? And he laughed at me. I don't know why, that, why he would do something like that. So get ready to go. Second quarter action here. Bombers trail. The Titans of West Hancock, 10-6. to 6. Not a lot of fouls, just two apiece in the first quarter. Each team shot two free throws. Jacko was one of two. Hobson, two of two for the Bombers. At 2 3 zone now by the Titans, as they had been playing man, now they've switched to zone. Bombers have to react to that, move, change the offense up a little bit. Wilson back in the ball game. Kerr with it, looks at the three, doesn't take it. Right side it goes to number 42. Holdhouse, that is Braden Holdhouse out there now. Watson. Down in the corner, it goes to Ian Case. Up top to uh, Wilson. Into Holdhouse. Back to Wilson. Kerr's going to try and drive on Siegfried. Three on the way by Watson is no good. And Siegfried, who tried to knock it off Connor Watson, 
actually stepped on the baseline when he did it. Checking in for the Titans, number 30, Alec Himes. Kerr, Holdhouse with it. Skips it across to Watson. Pump fake, drives, pull up jumper about 15 feet long. Gearhart with the rebound. Alessic to Himes. Himes on the nice pass to Grothaus. And he gets his first two of the game. And the Titans score for the first time in quite some time. I think they were quiet the whole second half. And Kerr gets called for the travel. And I really thought that Grothaus might have tripped him. But 6.33 remaining here in quarter number two. The offense was hot to start. Grothaus, Himes. A little two-man game going on over there. Gerhardt. Grothaus, turn around. Fadeaway jumper, no good. Gets his own rebound, puts it back up. He got hammered. No foul call. And it's going to go off of Grothaus, out of bounds. Possession to Macomb High. Langdon Allen replacing Wilson in the Bombers lineup. 5.59 remaining in the first half. Ian Case with it. Right side, Connor Watson now. He's been spending most of his time on the left side. Gerhardt traps him to the baseline. He gets it across to Wilson. Kerr. Still a two. Nope, they're back to the man, it looks like here. So they've got some men lost there for a moment. Holdhouse is going to drive, put up the shot. It's off no good. A lot of contact. And that's going to be white or black basketball. Shots off, no good. Langdon Allen, put back is good. Twelve to eight. Ball stay with the Titans. Gage Scott checking back in. He's replacing at number 12, Nolan Hurt. Five minutes remaining. Gerhardt with it. Grothaus. Himes. 445 remaining here in quarter number two. Gerhardt for three. It's off no good. Rebound. Grothaus. And the putback is good. Fourteen to eight, the score. Ian Case throws it over and back. Watson tried to save it. He was about to step over when he jumped to try to look like he was saving it, though, and it's a backcourt violation. Second one of the night for the Bombers. A timeout on the floor. Charge to the Bombers. We'll keep it here this time. We'll tell you this game being brought to you by Sports Corner at 124. Macomb's original local sports bar is Sports Corner at 124. With a focus on local sports, catch WIU games and all the area TSSR game time live broadcast at Sports Corner at 124. All while enjoying your favorite cold drink and some of the best food in West Central Illinois. Stop in and say hi at 124 North Randolph Street in Macomb. And the Old Dairy, located 210 South Lafayette Street in Macomb, serving soup, salads, sandwiches, homemade dessert, Blue Bunny ice cream, and a full-service coffee bar. Breakfast served all day and free Wi-Fi. Visit them online at www.olddairymacomb.com or call 309-837-6700 for your takeout. 
So we're ready to go here again. Once again, I want to thank Chase Mudd and Tyler Cummings for hopping into live chat. Let us know where you're watching from and who you're cheering for. We'd love to see that in our live chat. If you have some questions you want answers, we'll try to give you answers. Himes with it. He goes back door to Gerhardt. Gerhardt goes up, and he's blocked a jump ball. Possession to the Titans. Ian Case got the jump ball. As I said, we are going to try to do something a little different here at halftime. Jake Croxton's got a wireless microphone down there for us. He's going to try to do a quick halftime interview with the leading team going in and the trailing team coming out of halftime. So we'll see how that works out, but we will give it a whirl. Himes down low. Out it goes to Gerhardt. Gerhardt now to Himes. 340 remaining. Steal. Holdhouse gets the bucket. Holdhouse gets his first two. It's 14 to 10. Grothaus can't hold on to it. Bomber basketball checking in as Louis Siegfried for the Titans. Himes taking a seat. He stops and talks to Coach Dahl over there. And this time it's Gage Scott returning the favor on the steal, and he'll get the bucket to fall. Gage Scott gets his first two. Sixteen to ten. Langdon Allen, Connor Watson now. Watson goes to the rack, throws it up, off no good, gets his own rebound. Throws it up again, it's off no good. Jacko, who's back in the game, gets tied up by it. Well, I thought they were going to call a jump ball, but they're going to call Ian Case for the foul, his first, team's third. Alec Hines in for Jacko. Langdon Allen takes a seat. Hunter Wilson comes in for him. 2.41 remaining in the first half. Gerhardt. Himes picked up by Nolan Kerr. Gage Scott now. He's got Braden Holdhouse on him. Grothaus has Hunter Wilson. Now Siegfried after the Wilson switch. Now Himes can't hold on to the ball and it slides through his hands out of bounds. Jake Hobson checking back in, replacing Ian Case. 2.15 remaining here in the first half. 16 to 10 and the Bombers looking to make it a four or three point game here. Hunter Wilson with it. As just one or two trips down the floor is all that the Titans Use the 2-3 zone. They've been in man the rest of the time. They have switched back now. Now Holdhouse looks to the get to the basket. Can't do it. Gives it to Wilson. Wilson looks to a back. Oh, nice cut without the basketball for Kerr, but he can't finish. Grothouse, good job of Gage Scott coming over to help. Siegfried runs the other way and gets the bucket to fall. Louis Siegfried gets his fifth point. 18 to 10, shot no good for the Bombers and went off. I thought Grothaus touched that, but apparently he did not. 128 remaining. And it's a chance to build on an eight point lead for the Titans. Scott pulls up, free throw lane from about 10 feet, off no good. Hopson with the rebound for the Bombers. Several names not on the floor for the Bombers tonight. J.T. Jeter, Jack Duncan. Three on the way by Holdhouse is good. Roadhouse tries to answer with his own three. It's in and out, no good. 50 seconds remaining. Connor Watson drives to the hoop. His finger rolls good. Connor Watson gets just his fourth point. It's 18-13, 18-15, excuse me. Twenty-six seconds left, and Titans might be holding for one shot here. 
leading by three. It's the closest it's been since the first basket of the game. Pick and roll, stolen away by Kerr. He takes it back the other way in a hurry. He's going to go all the way, and a foul is going to be called on the floor. Charged to Gerhardt, I believe. Nope, it's going to be on Siegfried. His first, team's third. Left side, Connor Watson wide open for three, and we're tied. And that's the end of the first half of play. Let Jake get maybe Coach Dahl. Grab Coach Dahl real quick. As uh, the, the, the whole idea of two in a row was a little missed. We'll send it down to Jake Croxton now on the other side of the gym. Coach, I won't keep you very long here. Um, both teams' first game, you're tied at half. You had a little bit of lead there, but they made a run at the end. Yeah, we turned the ball over. We did a lot of stupid things and just decided to turn it over, and hopefully we can correct that. And we're very passive right now, very passive on offense. So hopefully that's just first game jitters. We're kind of a little nervous about it, but we got to be way, way tougher in this second half. All right, I'll let you go correct him. Thank you. 18-18, halftime. McComb and West Central. Back to you, Dwayne. Thank you, Jake Croxton. As it's 9.33 remaining in the halftime. And we are tied at 18, as I don't think the scoreboard updated or no, it had not. It's 18-18 at the half. That was Coach Dahl and Jake Croxton talking to us over on the far side. We'll take a break, and we'll be back in just a couple minutes on TSSR Game Time Live, presented by MDH. We're an 11-bed ER. I pride myself on every day. That I went through MDH when we were trying to get pregnant. We were struggling the first year, and then when we got pregnant, I stayed at MDH, and through labor and now for pediatrics. My experience was nothing short of phenomenal. I met, was met with amazing staff members who helped me through concerns that I had when she was first born, helping me learn how to be a new mom. It was really reassuring and comforting knowing that I had so much support and kindness around me. My entire pregnancy at MDH was amazing. At Western Illinois University, Leathernecks don't just blend in. Our purple stands out. Our students are innovative, creative, and resilient. At WIU, there is limitless potential with campuses in Macomb, the Quad Cities, and online. Visit wiu.edu slash potential to become a Leatherneck and get an education that stands out. I chose the MDH OBGYN group uh, because I've heard wonderful things about Dr. Smith. Um, and upon entering the office, I, I really got along with everybody and got a warm feeling. The staff is warm and inviting and welcoming. It's a small community, so it's a really nice uh, hospital to have here in the rural area. I continue to choose MDH because of the relationships I have. I really enjoy everybody here. At Western Illinois University, Leathernecks don't just blend in. Our purple stands out. Our students are innovative, creative, and resilient. At WIU, there is limitless potential with campuses in Macomb, the Quad Cities, and online. Visit wiu.edu slash potential to become a Leatherneck and get an education that stands out. At Country Financial, we enjoy serving the community in which we live, big or small. I love living in the Blandonsville area. It's where I grew up, went to school, and decided to raise my family. I never had a desire to live or work anywhere other than in a small town. I feel lucky to help my longtime friends and neighbors with their insurance needs. It's like working with family every day. I'm Brett Powell, your local Country Financial representative, whose door is always open to work with you. And welcome back here to Bushnell Prairie City High School. Mocomb High Bombers and West Hancock Titans tied at 18 at the half. Coach Dahl, a little uh, disappointed with the passiveness of his team as he went into the locker room. We'll see if we can catch Coach Anderson on the way out. Jake Croxton down there on the bench doing those two things for me here at the half. I want to appreciate that. We're going to take a look. We may have to cut this interview short, but we're going to take an interview from MDH, and let you listen to that. We'll be back in a few minutes. 
All right, welcome back. We're here now with Wanda Foster, the Vice President of Nursing and Clinical Administration. Is that correct? That's correct, yes. Well, what we're going to talk about today is some of the opportunities that are available at MDH for students, whether they be high school students, Spoon River College students, or Western students. MDH has a lot of opportunities to be involved and to learn, right? We absolutely do. And we look so forward to having students here. We are a clinical site for Western Illinois University and their bachelor's program for nursing, as well as for Spoon River College nursing students and others that are doing some independent study. We welcome students. And we, we also encourage high school students, if you would like to learn more about nursing, um, we would love to meet with you. And there are opportunities at the hospital also where they can apply for, for jobs here, for positions. So um, we work closely with our nursing students, and we hope to recruit them and attract them and want to come back. I know that uh, publicly there's been a short shortcoming or a short shortage of nurses, right? And I know that every hospital and every nursing home and every clinical place period is searching for nurses. So how important is it for MDH to have these groups work with them, whether it be MDH or be Spoon River College or whatever the case may be? How important is it for MDH to then recruit those nurses to stay here and work as a profession? It's, it's very important. We want um, nursing students to feel, feel very comfortable here, to enjoy their their clinical experience and their opportunities here. And then we want them to feel very comfortable, to give them a good orientation. We hire new graduates, of course, into our acute care area, as well as the intensive care unit. Uh, we hire new graduates in the emergency room, in home health and hospice, in our OB department, in our surgery department. These are all areas that new graduates can come into. We certainly give them a robust orientation. No one um, starts on their own until they feel completely ready. They have a mentor certainly with them, and we want to give them the best start for success that we can. And then there are many areas of specialty they can choose to go into. Nursing is a very unique field. You can work full-time. You can work part-time if you need to take time off uh, for some reason. Um, it's a field that you can kind of step into a little bit more um, uh, than maybe some other um, other fields in healthcare. We also have scholarships available um, through our auxiliary, uh, through the hospital, and then once someone is an employee here, we do have some tuition reimbursement. Uh, so we will certainly um, help with that. And going back to the scholarships and the shortages that are across the board, not necessarily at MDH, but everybody, everywhere, right? So everywhere, this is a profession that you can make a good living at and be pretty sure to have a job, right? So Absolutely. This is a profession that high schoolers that are playing these sporting events or high schoolers that are watching these sporting events should consider, I would imagine. Yes, yes, very much so. Um, you will always be assured to have a feel, uh, to have a, a a job, a career in nursing. I hate to call it just a job because we, you really want someone on that career path who has that passion for caring for people, uh, for providing nursing care. Um, through your education and through your orientation, we can teach you your skill set. Um, but if you have that passion and the desire um, to, to be in the nursing profession, you will do fine. Yeah, a, a career and a job, while they might be listed as the same thing, they're really not. Correct. I mean, if you if your career is being a nurse, you're probably going to enjoy it a lot more than if it's a job, right? That's right. And and you don't go into it first and foremost for the money. You go into you go into it because that's what you want to do with your life, and the money certainly will follow. Yeah, and that that goes for anything probably. Yes. But the nice thing is, is right now whether the money's good or bad, there's always going to be a job. There will. If you if you can get through the schooling and you can learn to love what you're doing, there's always going to be a job for you. Right? And it's not something for high school graduates exclusively. Um, we have many people who have made changes uh, midlife. We have people who have retired from their career in one thing and have chosen to go into nursing. So it, it's open for, for any age, uh, and we certainly welcome that. And you mentioned there's different areas of expertise for nurses. It, it, people think of that for doctors, but it's really that same way for nurses, right? I mean, you can be a surgical nurse and really become a great surgical nurse, or you can become a great ICU nurse, or you can do all those things. Yes. But if you really want to focus on something or be at OB, which you guys have a great OB department here, if that's what you want your focus to be and you really love working with expected and new mothers and, and, and young babies, 
you can do that, right? You can do that. We also have positions in our um, our MDH uh, physician clinic practices as well. And if you are in nursing and you can choose to specialize in a certain department, you can choose to go on and, and be a director or a clinical care coordinator. You can go back to school and become a nurse practitioner, um, become a certified registered nurse anesthetist. Um, you can go many different directions and really as high as, as to whatever extent in your education you would like to pursue. Well, Wanda, thanks for coming and talking to us. We greatly appreciate it. I know that there's probably places a specific places within an MDH that they can reach out to, correct? Is there somewhere that they need to call if they're interested? I would call our human resource department and start there, and then they can help direct and guide you. They can tell you about openings that we currently have. Everything, all of our current positions are listed on our MDH website, um, www.mdh.org. Um, but certainly any positions for high school students, if they would like to start somewhere in within the organization or volunteer experience, um, reach out to Human Resources and they can help direct you. Well, again, thank you very much. and We'll talk to you again soon. Thank you. And welcome back as we're ready to go with the second half here. Third quarter action coming your way. It's going to be Bomber Basketball going left to right now on the TV screen or your phone or however it is you might be watching us. Thanks for joining us here on Hewlett Public Pro LLC's TSSR Game Time Live presented by MDH. Game being brought to you tonight by Arnold Brothers Heating and Cooling. Since 1960, Arnold Brothers Heating and Cooling has provided a greater Macomb area with expert sales, service, and installation of quality home comfort systems. Call your local carrier dealer today at 309-833. 2852 and find out how Arnold Brothers Heating and Cooling delivers 365 days of indoor comfort. As the Bombers throw it away on their first possession, the game was tied at the buzzer for the first time. The Titans led throughout the first half until the shot by Watson at the end. Jacko's turnaround is good. And the Titans retake the lead. Langdon Allen with it. Wilson gets his shot blocked. It's tipped around. Scott comes up with it. Siegfried saves it. Finally comes down to Himes. 7.08 remaining. Siegfried to Scott. Down in the corner to Gearhart for three. It's good. Give Gearhart six on the Knights. A 5-0 run to open the Second half for the Titans. As the scoreboard's being finicky on me. Watson's going to try to answer with a three of his own. He will not. It's high off the glass. Rebounded to Siegfried. 6.34 remaining. Watson with a steal there. Himes is going to take it back as Watson had to steal it or save it back in. Ian Case with a big block on Alec Himes. Watson drives back the other way, has it knocked away from behind, and they're going to call Siegfried for the block this time as he got Watson earlier in the game, but this time he's going to get called for the block. It's team first of the second half. Roadhouse checking in. Siegfried going out, inbounded to Hunter Wilson. Back to Watson, 6.20 remaining here in the Third quarter from the Spartan Tip-Off Classic. You're watching Arnold Brothers Heating and Cooling presentation of Macomb Bomber Sports. And Connor Watson's going to pick up his second foul as he lost control of the ball and then didn't want to give up the easy layup, so he picks up the foul. Both teams will have one now here in the second half. 6.07 to go in the third quarter. Dwayne Hewlett. Dalton Strode on camera tonight. Picked him up in the reserve draft, so to speak. <laughs> I want to thank him for coming on and helping with the camera tonight. Himes. Grothaus has it taken away by Allen. Langdon Allen goes back the other way, and he's going to get tripped up. I think it was on accident, but he's going to get tripped up by Grothaus. It's his first, team second. Langdon Allen, a good job right in there, and he's going to be blocked from behind, but they're going to 
call it on the follow through. The clean, the block was clean up top, but Gerhardt's going to pick up the foul. He was clean up top, but it was the follow through with the body underneath that got the foul. It's still 23-18. Langdon Allen at the free throw line, shooting free throws for the first time tonight. It's off no good. Bombers have yet to score here in quarter number three. We are two minutes, 18 seconds in. Langdon Allen breaks the streak right there as he gets the free throw. Old BT himself gets the free throw to fall. And it's 23-19. Himes with it. Jacko, left wing, down the corner of Grothaus. He's going to drive, puts up the runner. It's good. A little floater, actually. Grothaus off the bench, has six for the Titans. And Brian Gerhardt picks up his second, team's fourth. So the Titans already have two times as many fouls in this half as they had in the first. Well, not quite. I guess they had three in the first. There's a shot blocked. Langdon Allen's going to come down with it. Kerr now with it. Grothaus guarding him out to Allen, up top to Watson. As the intensity has most definitely been picked up, by the Titans here in the second half. Coach Dahl talked about his team being too passive. Connor Watson guarded by Hurt, and they're going to call Hurt for the foul, I think. It might be on Jacko, though. It is on Hurt. His first, team's fifth. And two free throws coming for Connor Watson. He's got a team high seven points. Missed the first. 4.56 remaining, Braden Holdhouse, Steven Stuffelbeam, and Jake Hobson checking in for the Bombers. 4.56 remaining in quarter number three, 25 to 19. Titans with the lead over the Bombers. Second free throw off, no good as well. Rebound by the Titans. And Himes is going to bring it up the floor for West Hancock. Nolan Hurt for three, it's off, no good. Jacko tips it out and out of bounds. Possession to the Bombers. Roadhouse comes up to pick up Steven Stuffelbeam. Stuffelbeam's pass goes off of Holdhouse as Nolan Hurt came up to harass him. Stuffelbeam was getting harassed himself. And now Himes is going to bring it across to half court at the 430 mark of quarter number three. Stuffelbeam's out there. No, Kerr's out there guarding him. Now Watson on Hurt. And a kick. Not sure if it was Holdhouse or Watson that got the kick. Either way, it's possession to the Titans on the baseline. 421 remaining in the third quarter. And they're going to say one. Two, and the inbound. Watson gets the steal. Hobson goes back the other way, and he's going to have it partially blocked, and then he's going to pick up the foul on the reach after having Jacko, I believe, block it from behind. Hobson picks up his first, team second of the second half. Full court man press now by the Bombers with 4.09 remaining. Hurt gets it across half court, guarded by Watson. Gives it to Jacko at the free throw line. Jacko now to Scott. Scott pumps, turns, puts it up. Jacko with the offensive rebound and the put back. Jacko has six now. Outlet it on the steal. Hurt's going to track it down. Going to put it up. It's off no good. A good job by Hobson to stop it. West Hancock foul number 12. Nolan Hurt is second. Team at the sixth. Into the Butler lineup. Drew Watson, number five, in for West Hancock. Drew Watson checking in for the first time. Thank 
Gearhart drives the rack, puts the shot up and in. Twenty nine nineteen. Langdon Allen, or excuse me, Drew Watson gets the bucket to fall in his first varsity shot. Three on the way by Gearhart, in and out, no good. Tipped out to Jacko by Himes. Now to Siegfried, who's back in the game. 2.32 remaining in the third quarter. Gearhart's going to drive, gives it to Grothaus. Grothaus picked up by Drew Watson. Siegfried going to lower his shoulder, yep. Connor Watson might have drawn that one a little bit. And Coach Dahl agrees. Siegfried picks up his third personal. Team foul number seven. Siegfried's going to take a sec. Gage Scott comes back in. It's a non-shooting foul. Bombers will be in a bonus the rest of the way. We're only 2.22 to go here in quarter number three. And West Hancock already with seven team fouls here in the second half. Watson looks at the three, doesn't take it. Jacko on a mismatch out there now. Watson picks up his dribble, gives it to Kerr. Holdhouse far side, down to Kerr. Drow dribbles, and a late travel call coming on Kerr. 154 to go in the third quarter. A eight-point lead for the Titans. Gearhart with it. Dumps it out to Gage Scott. Gage Scott now dumps it near side to Grothaus. Grothaus for three. It's off. Watson picks it up, outlets it to his brother Drew, and he'll get the layup. Drew Watson off the bench. Two points or four points to spark the Bombers a little bit here, and it's 29-23. Jacko's going to try the three, and he nails it. Luke Jacko hits the tray. He answers the Bombers' run a little bit. It's 32-23. Gearhart, Watson of the Connor variety, has it lost, knocked away. Grothaus now from Himes, back to Himes. He's going to drive. Nobody's there to pick him up, puts the shot up and in. Alec Himes, Alec Himes gets two. It gives him four, and it's 34-23, a 10-point lead, or make it an 11-point lead for the Titans. Largest lead of the game, I do believe. Drew Watson loses it. Jacko comes up with it. He's going to go, puts up the layup, up and in. Jacko gets his seventh of the quarter. It's 36-23. Now Watson's pass to Kerr goes out of bounds, getting a little too fancy. And it's going to be 35.5 seconds remaining, a 13-point lead for the Titans. Steven Stuffelbeam replacing Connor Watson here. In the ball game, Gerhardt. Stufflebeam is a defender for sure. He'll get up in the mug. He's up in the mug of Gerhardt right now. Still on the dribble is Gerhardt. A pair of 10s battling each other right there. 23 seconds remaining. He's going to find somebody to give it to. A timeout's going to be called by West Hancock. A 30-second timeout. Coach Dahl less than impressed and needing to call that timeout. We'll keep it here and tell you this game being brought to you by Ron LB Auto Sales with locations in Macomb and Augusta. With 80 years of car sales experience, Ron LB Auto Sales is your hometown go-to for your next car. In Macomb on East Jackson Street, stop in and talk to Justin, Jared, or Chris, or visit www.lbsellscars.com to check out their inventory. And McDonough District Hospital, Thank you for voting McDonough District Hospital Rehabilitation Center is best of the best in McDonough County. Let their experienced and dedicated sports medicine and rehabilitation staff show you why MDH has been voted best of the best in 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, and again in 2021. Three convenient locations to serve you, two in Macomb and one in Bushnell.
Grodhouse with it. Gives it to Jacko. Gerhardt, five seconds. Jacko's going to drive, and he'll put the shot up and in. That'll be the end of the third quarter of play. The West Hancock Titans, 38. The Bombers, 23. We'll take a break, and we'll be back on TSSR Game Time Live, presented by MDH in just about 30 seconds. I chose MDH. Uh, we moved here, and I was researching different places that would allow me to VBAC, um, uh, have a vaginal birth after C-section, and the doctors here do encourage that, and so I, I chose that after looking online, and I wouldn't want to deliver anywhere else because they all go above and beyond, and they're so kind and actually care about you. And welcome back as we're ready to go with the fourth quarter here from Bushland Prairie City High School, 38-23, a late run by the Titans. Have allowed them to open up their largest lead of the game. They lead by 15, 38-23. You're watching Arnold Brothers Heating and Cooling. Coverage of Macomb High Sports on TSSR Game Time Live, presented by MDH, and it will be Titans basketball to open the final quarter of play. Gearhart, Ian Case knocked it away. Jacko's going to try another three. That one's sh short. And the Bombers go back the other way. Connor Watson, who's back in the game. Langdon Allen back in as well. On the floor also, number 22, Hunter Kendrick. Ian Case and Gearhart's going to get called for the foul. That'll be his third, team's eighth. That's the team's eighth foul. Just two in the third quarter. Ian Case... Missed the front end of the one and one. Jacko <laughs> steals it away from a pass that was supposed to go to Grothaus. 7.20 as the Bombers doing a little run and jump defense here, trying to get some turnovers. Himes with it. Langdon Allen reaching in, making a little contact. And then Langdon Allen going to get called for the foul. His second, team's third. Might have been lucky that he got called for a foul there because Himes had a clear run to the basket and he was finished with the layup, but it was after the whistle blew. 38-23, 7.05 to go here in the basketball game. The Titans with the lead over the Bombers. Oh, nice spin move by Gerhardt. Himes with it now, picked up by Langdon Allen. Himes going to drive again. He's going to get called for the carry that time. Gage Scott hits the three just for good measure, but it doesn't count. 6.55 remaining. Here in the fourth quarter. Connor Watson going to try to get it out to Hunter Wilson. And Gates Scott trying to save it, went into the bench, and Hobson and Coach Keene over there made the save on him. But it'll be Bomber basketball, 640 remaining. Langdon Allen from about four feet fading away gets the bucket. It'll be his fourth point, make it fifth point. Gavin Grothaus gets the tray. Forty-one twenty-five. Shot off, no good for the Bombers. Gage Scott comes up with it, and he's going to get called for the double dribble. That's a good call. There was a lot of contact. Coach Dahl is less than impressed over there. Coach Anderson pacing the sidelines as well. 
Bombers trailing by 16 with 5.55 remaining in the basketball game. Ian Case with it, guarded by Jacko. Down low on a cut. Nice cut without the basketball by BT. His fourth point of the quarter. Himes now going to go to the basket, and he's going to be fouled. I believe Kerr. We'll see if it's on Kerr or not. It is on Kerr. His first. Team's fourth. Himes, Jacko, 5.30 remaining. Gerhardt's going to try the three and nail it. Brian Gerhardt hits another tray. Ian Case with the shot. It's off no good. Jacko with the rebound, and Ian Case is going to pick up the foul. His second, team's fifth. Eight fouls for the Titans, five for the Bombers. Titans lead 44-27. I think my math skills tell me that's a 17-point lead. Nolan Kerr reaches in, knocks it away from Himes, and rolls right off his foot out of bounds. Possession back to the Bombers with 5.08 to go. Connor Watson near side. Watson's shot off no good. Ian Case and Himes battling for it, and they're going to call it off of Case out of bounds. Possession to the Titans. 4.55 remaining as it starts to get a little uh, rough and rumbly here in the final stages of this one. A 17-point lead for the Titans over the Bombers. Nolan Kerr is all over him. And Himes is uh, wanting to know where the foul was right there. Might have been a legitimate question. 4.45 remaining. But you can't blame the Bombers. If they're going to let them play defense like that, you're going to play defense like that, especially when you need to try to get back in the game. 4.36, I was going to say, I had that was a really long five seconds and never did really break the distance, the defensive distance there. Turnover on the five-second violation, 4.35 remaining. Now Siegfried, as Wilson tried to pass it across the case. And Langdon Allen is going to get called for the block, his third foul, team sixth. Both teams will be in the bonus the rest of the way now. Jake Hobson replacing Ian Case for the Bombers. When the ball comes in, they'll both be on bonus. Siegfried to Himes, 4-19 remaining. Himes is going to be blocked by Langdon Allen. It's going to be picked up by Gerhardt finally. Corner, Jacko three, good. 47-44, or 47-27, excuse me. A 20-point lead for the Titans with 348 remaining. Going to the rack, Hobson with a rebound and a putback. Jake Hobson gets the bucket. We'll take a quick break and we'll be back on TSSR Game Time Live presented by MDH as Arnold Brothers Heating and Cooling brings Bomber Sports from the Spartan Tip-Off Classic. We'll be right back. I went through MDH when we were trying to get pregnant. We were struggling the first year and then when we got pregnant I stayed at MDH and through labor and now for pediatrics. My experience was nothing short of phenomenal. I 
met, was met with amazing staff members who helped me through concerns that I had when she was first born, helping me learn how to be a new mom. It was really reassuring and comforting knowing that I had so much support and kindness around me. My entire pregnancy at MDH was amazing. And welcome back, 47-29. Titans lead the Bombers here in game number one and night number two at the Spartan Tip-Off Classic. Game also being brought to you tonight by m and Furniture, Bushnell's only furniture store. m and Furniture is a mainstay in the community and offers free delivery within 40 miles. For everything you need to furnish your new home or replenish an old one, stop in and see the fine folks at 481 West Main Street or find them on Facebook, Instagram, or on the web at www.mandb furnitureinc.com. You can also call 309-772-2111. Grodehouse back in the game. Goes to the corner to Colin or to Hurt. Nolan Hurt. Grodehouse is going to try the three. It's short. Tipped by Jacko. Outletted to Holdhouse to Wilson. Now a nice pass down to Hobson and Hobson got hammered by Hurt and no foul called. Now to Scott. Scott's going to do the reverse layup. It's off no good. Tipped around. Hurt's going to come down with it. Go out to Gage Scott for three right corner. It's short. Jacko up there tipping it around. Finally, Siegfried comes down with it for the Titans. And a foul called on Connor Watson. It is a one and one coming for Siegfried. Siegfried shooting a one and bonus. It's off no good. Watson picked up his third. Both teams have missed the front end of one and bonuses now. Skips across Watson, 245 remaining, three on the way. Off no good. That was Holdhouse with the three. Rebound to Jacko. Pass knocked away but picked up by Scott. Then to Jacko. Now back to Nolan Hurt. Hurt down the corner to Gage Scott who barely could get to it. Tipped away by Kerr as a couple 20s doing about it though. Ian Case checking back in. 228 remaining. 228 remaining. In the fourth quarter, Nolan Hurt to Gage Scott. Siegfried, he's going to go dump it out. Grothaus for three, left wing, off no good. Watson with the rebound. Holdhouse is going to get it, and he's going to get the layup. Braden Holdhouse gets two more. Foul called on the Bombers. Case gets his third, team eighth. Eight fouls apiece now. Gage Scott going to be shooting two free throws for the Titans. First one is good. Lindsey May checking in for McComb. Lindsay, the one of the star linebackers for the Bombers football team that was so good this year. Scott makes them both. Watson, 145 remaining. Little Euro step, and it's going to be a foul on. 14. Grothaus is going to pick up his third, team ninth. Lindsey May is going to be shooting two free throws. Actually, yep, it's just nine, so it's one in bonus for Lindsey May. And he went over the free throw line too quickly. And Hunter Kendrick checking back in for... McComb, 141 remaining. Siegfried 
Goes right to the rack, puts it up and in. Fifty-one, thirty-one. Titans lost at the hands of the Bombers in a big way on the football field. Feel like they're maybe returning the favor a little bit here. Up by 20, 51-31. Connor Watson's going to try the three. It's short. Rebound to Gage Scott. Outlet to Jacko. Jacko's going to give it across. The shot was missed, but Jacko gets the put back. Tried to get hurt a basket. Three on the way by Watson is in and out. No good. Gage Scott with the rebound. We're under a minute to go. 53 seconds remaining. Gage Scott as the Titans might well run the clock out here. Up by 22. 32 seconds remaining. Nolan Hurt. Heard somebody say earlier tonight that the Titans might be the third best team behind Illini Bluffs and Macomb as Kendrick's going to try and get a steal and then a push with 15.1 seconds left. Kendrick gets the foul, his first, team's ninth. At the free throw line, shooting a one in bonus is Gage Scott. He's hit two free throws in this quarter. Bunch of subs coming in for the Titans. Number 52, Carter Barnes. Number 32, Nolan Gooding. Double zero, Bryce Varner. And number 24, checking in as well as Mason Stevenson for West Hancock and for the Bombers. Drew Watson and Steven Stuffelbeam. Holdhouse still out there. A jump ball is going to be called with 12.1 seconds as Scott missed the free throw. Checking in for the, the Titans, Parker Quinlan, number 22. 10 seconds remaining as Holdhouse with it. Going to give it to Kendrick. Kendrick looks to drive. Going to give it off to Stuffelbeam. And that's going to be the last shot. It'll count for Steven Stuffelbeam to get two points. 53-33, the final. The West Hancock Titans get the 20-point win over the seven points apiece for several players for the Bombers. We'll Take a break, and we'll hopefully have a couple coaches, or we may have them at the start of the next game. We'll wait and see. We'll be back in just a few minutes on TSSR Game Time Live, presented by MDH. After my appointment that day, I just made up my mind that I'm going to have my baby here in Macomb <laughs> and this hospital because irrespective of where you're from, who you are, it's just their line of duty to make sure they give care, make you comfortable, I thought about the staff of MDH, you know, they are, they are all good. And you will get all the support you need. This is just the best place for you and your family. At Western Illinois University, Leathernecks don't just blend in. Our purple stands out. Our students are innovative, creative, and resilient. At WIU, there is limitless potential with campuses in Macomb, the Quad Cities, and online. Visit wiu.edu slash potential to become a Leatherneck and get an education that stands out. Welcome back to Bushnell Prairie City High School as we'll look at some stats real quick. These are unofficial, of course. I have uh, missing a few points for the Bombers, I do believe. But 16 points unofficially a team high and a game high for Luke Jacko for the Titans. 11 points for Nolan or for Brian Gearhart off the bench. Nine points for Gavin Grothaus. Seven points for Louis Siegfried. Nine or four points for Gage Scott. Four points for Alec Himes. For the Bombers... Jake had three players with seven points. I only have two, so I'm missing a few points here. But 
Seven for Connor Watson, seven for Langdon Allen. Four points for Drew Watson. Two points for Steven Stuffelbeam. Two points for Nolan Kerr. Four points for Jake Hobson is what I have, obviously, unofficial. So that'll do it for game number one. I believe both coaches are going to come talk to me, but we will uh, wait just a couple minutes as we are prepared for the next game. So we'll wait a couple minutes, see if one of them come before I have to go off air. If they do, we'll talk to uh, them before we go off, and then we'll get the other coach when we come back on. So we'll take another break here on TSSR Game Time Live, presented by MDH, and we'll be back in just a couple minutes. I chose the MDH OBGYN group uh, because I've heard wonderful things about Dr. Smith. Um, and upon entering the office, I, I really got along with everybody and got a warm feeling. The staff is warm and inviting and welcoming. It's a small community, so it's a really nice uh, hospital to have here in the rural area. I continue to choose MDH because of the relationships I have. I really enjoy everybody here. MTC Communications is building a high-speed fiber network in our community, and we're putting priority on the areas with the greatest interest. That means we need your input to let us know you want us to build fiber in your area first. Experience the speed and convenience of fiber internet by visiting our special website and registering. Let us know you want fiber internet today, and make your voice heard. I couldn't ask for a better agent, for a better company, in a disaster where you have no idea where to start. I learned that there's not a given in life. It takes a team. There's people that are gonna watch out for us and make care. It's been pretty stressful. Once we saw Lori and got our plan, it's... Uh, like a huge weight lifted. I went through MDH when we were trying to get pregnant. We were struggling the first year, and then when we got pregnant, I stayed at MDH and through labor and now for pediatrics. My experience was nothing short of phenomenal. I met, was met with amazing staff members who helped me through concerns that I had when she was first born, helping me learn how to be a new mom. It was really reassuring and comforting knowing that I had so much support and kindness around me. My entire pregnancy at MDH was amazing. And welcome back. We're going to call this stream quits. I don't see either coach coming this way just yet, so we'll try to get both of them on during the next game. It's Illini West and West Prairie. We'll be back with our next stream in just a little bit here on TSSR Game Time Live. You've been watching Arnold Brothers' presentation of Macomb Bomber Sports on TSSR Game Time Live, presented by MDH. <laughs> 